Welcome to the 2024 Hunt Stand Deer Dirt Series. I'm going to kick off episode number one with a hypothetical situation. You can look around you here and uh, see a big valley. This is actually my farm, but I'm going to pretend that I just got permission here to hunt this. I'm going to walk you through all the steps to uh, electronically scout this property and what I would do if I was coming into this cold, how you can break it down on your computer and actually come up with stand locations. Uh, I've done this many, many times. In fact, a big part of this farm I haven't scouted yet. So this will be in some ways very practical. But let's just start by saying that, you know, I knocked on Bill Winkie's door and gosh, I was a little bit nervous about it because, you know, I heard he was a serious deer hunter and I thought, eh, you know, he's probably going to get mad at me and kick me off. But lo and behold, he said, yes, go ahead. You can go and hunt here, but you have to shoot a doe first and then you can shoot a buck. And I'm thinking, man, what an opportunity. You know, I'm going to make the most of this. So on the rest of this episode, I'm going to talk about what I would do if that was the real situation and what I would do to prepare myself to hunt this farm. Okay, so now I'm in my office and uh, got a few cameras going here and, and uh, doing a screen recording. I'm going to walk you through the process of how I would break this farm down. Like I said, I got permission. I'm excited about that. Uh, it's, a, it's not a time of the season being June that I can learn a lot by walking around on this property. Uh, I need to learn as much as I can from the tools that I have available to me online. So I'm using the Hunt Stand app. In this, in this case, it's obviously the website. I've got the background layer set for Mapbox Satellite. Uh, I do like that one a lot because it has the contour lines and it's got a fairly recent map uh, background aerial and I can learn a lot from that. So uh, without talking about it anymore, I'm going to dive right in. I look for funnels, bottlenecks, obvious places where the deer have to go around something. So you have two really features that you're focused on. One are the things that the deer have to avoid, you know, like ditches or bluffs or high banks on a creek or a pond, whatever it might be, things that they have to go around they create funnels on the side that's convenient to the deer. Uh, then the other thing you have to look at, of course, is you know, what are those things that attract them to travel? And in that case, you're looking at uh, you know, like the path of least resistance, maybe a saddle in a ridge line, or maybe it's just a, a, a safe passage, like a band of cover that connects two spots of bigger cover. So you think, well, there's gonna be does bedded here, does bedded there and the buckster and the rut are going to travel this safe path uh, between those two places somewhere that they know they can jump into you know a little bit of cover and hide they don't like crossing wide open ground they will during the rut but they would prefer to, to travel you know along some type of habitat so those are the things that i'm looking for and believe it or not uh, i've done this a lot over the years you know i've hunted a lot of different states and hunted a lot of different properties uh, when i was a kid i had permission on 62 62 different farms um, that was pretty cool obviously a different era i'm old now so i was a kid a long time ago and, and things were different then but you know being able to hunt uh, that many different places i couldn't scout them all so i had to do a lot of the hard leg work you know looking at aerial photos back then it was just you know printed paper uh, aerial photos but now we've got the benefits of these tools you know online like the hunt stand app and this is the uh, pro whitetail app that i'm using so I've got the contour lines, which tell me what the terrain looks like. And I've got the, uh, you know, the, the aerial background photo, which obviously shows me, you know, what, what cover is there. So first things first, it's really simple when you've got creeks and ditches. And I've talked about that a lot in other media that I've produced and how simple those are to find uh, online and, and on these maps and really how simple they are to hunt too, because they're very predictable in the way that you hunt those. So let's see what we can find here. Uh, anytime you see the contour lines make a sharp corner, like right here in this spot, uh, that's gonna be a draw. And in most parts of the country, when you've got a draw like that, 
at the bottom of it, there's usually a ditch and it's caused by erosion. You know, the water coming down and coming off the hills into that valley, it forms a ditch and the deer generally don't cross those very many places. They like to go around them. And the easiest place to hunt that they go around or, or through is at the very top. Uh, so let's take this one for example. It's pretty clear. I mean, the sharper the corner, like here's one that's very sharp. Uh, here's one that's not as sharp. It's more rounded. The sharp ones really are deeper because the lines are places of the same elevation. So they're called contour lines. And the closer they are together and the sharper that they are in the case of this draw, the deeper it is and the steeper it is and the narrower it is. So that's going to be more of a impediment to a traveling deer than one that's broad. It's going to be easier for them to, to go across. We want them to have to go around it. So that's one spot. You look at this ditch or draw and you say there's probably a ditch at the bottom and here's the top. You can see it's, there not, aren't any contour lines there. The, uh, um, it's a level it's the ridge line. So I would hunt this one up in here someplace, maybe right in here, because the deer travel around the contour line and as they go around the top of that ditch, they're going to funnel, you know, from multiple different directions into that one spot. And that's uh, definitely an obvious one. It jumps out at me. Let's look for a couple others. Uh, I mean, this one looks pretty good too, where it's coming up sharply out of that valley. And this one's a little bit too broad, probably, if you look at it. Uh, I probably wouldn't scout that one. Uh, this one looks pretty good. That's, that's a steep and deep uh, ditch coming up through there, draw. And again, because I know this type of terrain, the deer bed on these ridge tops. So any, any place you see that's at the very top and fairly flat, where the contour lines are a long ways apart, that tells you it's pretty flat. So it's starting to flatten out. Let's just follow this bluff up. It's pretty steep. Then it gets to here and you can see the contour lines start going a long ways apart. So it's starting to flatten out. So this is a point, like a bedding ridge top. They would bed here. I mean, they would bed here, 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 here. I mean, you can go around. It's pretty straightforward. All of these leveled off tops, these points of these ridges are obvious bedding areas. So anytime you can find a ditch or a draw between two bedding areas, like here's another classic one, you know, if you look at this. So if they bed out on here and they bed out on here, the bucks know that those are the places where the does bed. So the, the ditch or the draw in between becomes a really good funnel during the rut. The bucks are going to be going from one doe bedding area to another, and they're going to follow that path of least resistance by going up around. Uh, so that's a classic spot. I would have a stand there. I mean, I don't even really need to scout it. I mean, I could just walk right there, put the stand up, and it'd be good. Uh, that's the beauty of, of the tools that we have available to us now. My farm just has a lot of topography, you know, places where the, the terrain is influencing how the deer travel. There aren't as many spots on here where you'd see where the deer are following a band of cover. This is one that's off the farm a little ways, but it's pretty obvious that there's a saddle here. So that's a high spot right here. This is a high spot, and you can see there's a dip in between. You got a point here and a point here. The, the bucks during the rut would be traveling from this point to this point using this saddle, using that low spot. And that accomplishes two things. It's the path of least resistance, and it's also a spot that keeps them out of sight when they're traveling. There's one here too. You can see a, a higher spot, higher spot, and a dip in between. And I've sat here quite a bit and they do funnel through there a lot. You see a lot of deer crossing right through here. And again, they're just taking advantage of the terrain. Uh, let's see, what else can we look at? Clearly, the aerial photo gives me a look at what's, what's been planted. And the nice thing about hunt stand is I can go to crop history and uh, it shows you know what is what historically has been planted in each different location and then I'm going to go to there's another one monthly satellite that's really cool because you know some of the maps the background maps available are a little bit older 
so they may not have you know the, the current crop rotation so this shows april of 2024 let's go back to uh, october of 23 and see what was planted the point is you get a better sense of what's growing in each of these locations if you can go month by month it's not as high resolution you know once you get into the monthly ones as what it is um, you know when you go back to the you know to the uh, regular standard uh, you know background layer so just by coming in here looking at you know month by month you can get a really good idea what is actually planted uh, it's one thing to see the map and see well there's an open spot but is it actually planted or is that in pasture uh, you know what is the land use for that area so that's a really cool layer so I'm going to go back to Mapbox Satellite, which, like I said, is my favorite. So here's a brushy fence line. So like, let's say you've got a buck living over in this area or spending time here, but he wants to come over here and look for does during the rut. The easiest route for him to go is along that brushy fence line. And that's an obvious no-brainer. I mean, I would definitely scout that. Uh, there's water, you know, and that's always an important factor. So you start pulling it in. I mean, uh, here's a pond, uh, there's a pond, and again, I'm dealing with a little bit slower internet here. There's a pond, there's a pond, there's a pond. You know, so there's a lot of water sources. Looks like there's one there, yep, there's a pond. Um, so those are also uh, things that you can grab, you know, real easily. There's one right here, you know, off the, the uh, hunt stand app. I would go into this season then with um, those spots already picked out in my mind. You know, I'd, I can go in here and I can pick the, you know, the, the app and I can say, okay, I'm going to put, I'm going to start dropping points. Uh, hang on stand. Uh, so I'm going to start dropping points in some of these locations. Um, so I'd have about 10 of these kind of spots, if not more, picked out going into the season. And, uh, you know, without going through and showing you every single one of them that I would select here, you get the idea. Uh, the terrain features tell you almost everything you need to know if there is terrain. And if there's not terrain, you can fall back on the food sources, knowing that you've got, you know, month by month, you can tell what's been planted. You know the deer are going to orient toward the stuff that's planted. I mean, that's going to be where they head toward in the evenings and where they head away from in the mornings. Uh, it's easy in this type of terrain to find the bedding areas. Uh, so everything falls into place. I mean, it's all pretty straightforward. The only thing you don't see are the trails. And if you go here and scout this, the trails are going to be right where you expect them to be based on the train features and then, like I said, the location of food sources and bedding areas. Uh, I don't really need to scout this farm, to be honest with you. It's pretty straightforward. I would put a stand on my back. The entry and exit routes might be a little bit tricky trying to figure out, okay, how do I get in and out without the deer knowing? But again, you can use the train features, um, you know, the topo maps or the topo overlay makes it really simple. I mean, you go up the valley and up the draw and, and you know, up the ditch and you're right at the stand at the top of the draw. Uh, the deer on either side, you know, they shouldn't know you're there, especially going in in the morning that way. Maybe in the evening, you come in across the top and you drop into that same stand uh, from the opposite direction. And then maybe you have to leave because you don't want to go back through the food after the hunt. You might have to leave going out the bottom. But all that stuff is so uh, available so easy to see uh, when you're looking at this um, this topo map and this aerial photo so hopefully that gives you an idea uh, I've done a lot of this kind of hunting you know I'm not trying to over exaggerate how simple this can be but I've hunted this way a lot in my life and it's been very effective you know, rarely have I gone into a spot that looked good on the aerial photo and on the topo map and not had it, not had it actually turn out good, you know, not look the way that I expected it to when I got there. So you can cut your scouting time down a lot, which makes it 
easily uh, something that you can do on a wider scale during the off season, but also reduces the amount of scent that you have to leave on the property if you're trying to do it during the season. So that wraps up uh, this week's episode of Deer Dirt. I'll be back again in another week, so keep checking back.